Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is Melly Deutsch and it's really a pleasure. I'd like to thank you for coming. I know it's been a long day for many of you since uh, you're at the uh, ELT MOOC. So uh, this is really a pleasant surprise to see um, you here as well. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and um, anything else you'd like to add. Please feel free to use the chat box uh, as you wouldn't in, in a face-to-face -face class where we don't chat. Uh, we pay it, well, we try to pay attention. Here you can use the chat box as you go. So we've got Libya, Bulgaria, and uh, let's see, Morocco. I'm trying to guess. Um, and let's see, uh, Italy. Am I correct? All right, so um, Salman, you say it's your first class. Uh, so I presume you mean your first class with uh, learning to blend and flip with technology. But it's not your first class on WizIQ. You've been here before. All right, so uh, if you could just add in the chat box, uh, since this is about WizIQ as an LMS, which many people don't realize, but it also is uh, progressing in that direction. WizIQ started as only a live online class, such as this one. And um, it started with the LMS a few years ago. Actually, WizIQ started in 2007. So a few years ago means about three years ago. Um, they started with the LMS. All right, so this uh, particular class is about the LMS. So if you could add in the chat box a little bit about your experiences with learning management systems. What does it mean? A learning management system, it sounds very, very technical um, because it is. Hello, Valentina. Good to see you. Well, as you can see in the uh, F, uh, that is not a learning management system. All right, those are actually teachers uh, and they were in a program, a Cisco program, they're English language teachers. Uh, and what they did was they were uh, teaming up to teach young learners about technology through English. In other words, the uh, participant, the students were learning, or kids rather, because they were grade, uh, I believe, just starting high school, so the end of junior high. They were on grades 9 and 10, and they were learning English through technology, which is kind of interesting. This was a program in 2007. So that's not a learning management system, but the teachers, okay, or the participants are learning. So how is it possible to learn in a face-to-face -face, uh, learning environment and you notice it's not a classroom, okay? They're not in a classroom. They're in a room, but it's not a classroom as uh, we know it. So what do you notice about the, uh, the group? Okay, take a look and see if there's anything that stands out. Oh, you can't hear me. Wow, because I see that it's going quite high. I could raise the volume. Um, let me do that now. But even though I think that it's going quite, no, it's quite good. Yeah, 
I was just checking to see uh, the bar. So Valentina, um, you should do what Jace does, Valentino. Tina, maybe go uh, or just refresh. You don't have to go anywhere. Refresh the page. Hello, Tom. Okay, so where is this? Okay, where are these people? They're not in a classroom, and yet they seem to be working together. They are learning. They're face to face, so it's not online like we are. Oh, if you can't, oh, you can hear. I thought you couldn't hear. So I thought that, oh, you said you can hear. It's Sulman. Oh, right. Sulman can hear. So Sulman should <laughs> refresh. Uh, sorry your page sorry about that <laughs> okay sorry all right okay so um i'll tell you what you see all right since you must be tired after a long day all right so what you're seeing is actually as i said they're teachers they're learning together but they're sitting around a table and i think that's really really important how many of you um sit around a table with your students or your students sit around a table, one big table, or if, you know, if it's a big class, a few big tables and learn together around a table, like these teachers are. You don't. Right. I think most classes do not look like this, right? Okay, um, a group, yes, it is a group, it's teachers, and you're right, teachers <laughs> are different, definitely different. Okay, but they don't have to be different, everybody could be learning like this, okay, but generally it's a room with walls and there are tables, you know, or desks for uh, one, two students, and so on. So it's very, very confined, it's not as uh close-knit as uh, these teachers are okay so you're aware of the fact that this is not a regular classroom well it's not a course management system but that's how a course management system works in a course management system the teachers can work together like this or students can learn like this in a course management system Okay, so this is the closest I can get to a physical uh, learning environment where you can see that they're all learning together. Notice this teacher or this student is looking over here. It's okay, they're not cheating, it's not a test. Okay, this one is pointing over here and uh, they're very quiet and yet they're together. They're collaborating exactly. And you can sense this togetherness. And that's what online learning is all about. It's working like this. Only everybody sits in their own house. But it's the same kind of unity. Okay, these teachers are very close. They became very close friends. There's no competition. They definitely know how to work well together. Okay. And uh, I took the photo, so I know how good they are. All right, so this class. Oh, Sulman can't hear. Oh, my gosh. Sulman, refresh your page. And contact me and or support. Okay, at wasiq.com. It must be really annoying not to be able to hear. All right, but um, the bar is going. Anybody else having problems hearing me? Hello, Helena. No. <laughs> All right, because I could. Well, I see the bar is going. I'm trying to raise my voice, but it, it might be too loud. And All right, so this class is about this. If you're looking for an LMS or if you're looking for an environment such as this one, if you want this, okay, 
online. Face to face is fine. Online, okay, that's a learning management system or a learning environment that is simple. Wiz IQ courses will be a perfect choice because they're simple. I've been using Wiz IQ courses for different things like research. I did a qualitative research and I interviewed the participants on Wiz IQ privately. This was a private course that I created in order to interview them. I conduct online conferences like Connecting Online. I've been doing it for five years since 2009. So I conduct online conferences using courses on WizIQ. I conduct MOOCs. I started the first Moodle MOOC in the world on WizIQ in uh, June of 2013. I also created mass courses uh, in 2012 and 11. I uh, create courses on WizIQ. And I do this for blended learning programs. Now, what is blended learning? Okay, what's blended? Anybody know what blend? Well, you know what a blender is. Okay, I don't know if that's a good example. Um, oops, that was bad. Blended. I don't know why the X got in there. Blended. You're scared. Well, this is what it's all about. I can't hold your hand, but I can help you. All right. That's uh, that's what I do. That's what I've been doing since um, 2003. I've been helping educators so that they can teach in blended learning programs, teach online. All right. So um, I'll be happy to help everybody. Anybody just ask. All right. Yeah, very good, Sulman. That means you can hear. Yes, it's mingled. You mingle, you mix. That's right. Exactly. All right. So blended learning program means that it's face to face like you saw before. And by the way, these teachers were using blended learning to teach the students. In other words, it was face to face and it was also online. All right, so this is a real live example, and they're all English teachers. The presenter, that's me, will demonstrate how to create and teach using WizIQ courses. We're talking about courses, not live online the way I am right now. That's a virtual class. And the participants, you will learn how to add content and engage your students. And I know it might be scary. But it's a lot of fun. Um, engage your students with the content and then one another because you want to get the students connected and engaging in socially engaging activity. Now, what is a socially engaging activity? Or C. What is C? Okay, what is C? What is a socially engaging activity? Well, it means that there are people. What do you need for a socially engaging activity? One, you need people, right? So that they can engage. You can't be alone. All right, so first people. Number two, you need to have content. Okay, some kind of content. And number three, you need your students to connect, okay, with the content. That's all. Okay, connect with the content and each other. So that's all. That's a socially engaging activity. So don't get scared. It's not that difficult. Exactly. You get them to communicate through the content. In other words, the content becomes the thing that they have in common. That's the common denominator. They may be completely different people, different kids, different background, different levels, but the content connects them, whatever it happens to be. And they participate. That's right. And then we feel good. So what do you need 
what do you need for all this? What do you need to teach online? That's right, Helena. It's the face-to-face -face and everything that we know about teaching face-to-face. -face. And if you're an experienced teacher, you know a lot. Okay, and then adding technology and having students work on their own at home or anywhere else, including the classroom. Okay, so you can also um, have them in a computer lab. So, that's right. And in some classes, Sulman, there are too many students. And if you're going to teach English as a foreign language and you have 1,000, 2,000 students, that's kind of difficult in one class, yeah. Okay, so you need to have the online element. But this could also be for fully online. So what do you need? Well, number one, you need, first you need people. You need students, right? Number two, you need the content. And number three, you need them to, you need a place. You need a place. <laughs> you need a place or a place for what? A place where the students can connect with the content. Okay, so you need a place where the students can connect with the content. So notice we're talking about students and content. <laughs> I haven't said anything about the teacher. Okay, the teacher is the one that puts the content and gets everybody, orchestrates uh, the students with one another and the content. So the teacher is actually a conductor, a musician, right? A conductor. The teacher has to uh, manipulate if you like, and manage the whole show. All right, so that's what the teach. Hello, John Davy. So that's what the teach. So what you need, you need students, you need content, and you need a place online, okay? Because we're talking about online. And for those of you who came late, let me just go back to this. This is what we want. Okay, this is face-to-face. -face. We want this in the learning management system. We want to add the online components so these people can continue because you can't be together forever, all right? We can't have this like this forever, can we? Oh, you need a, yeah, you need a place, not a physical place, Sulman. You need a virtual place. That's what I meant. All right, so take a look at these. I look serious. I'm not even in the picture. Is this what you mean, Helena? I look serious here. I'm not here. Why do they look serious? I think I missed something. I look serious. Oh, okay. All right, so these are teachers who want to continue learning and that's the idea the idea is to go from face to face and continue learning afterwards all right so that's what we're talking about so first of all let me just tell you a little bit about what is that keep asking questions that's very good it keeps me on my toes all right so uh, that's great all right so we need content remember i said students okay we have students now we need content and we have to choose content very, very carefully. Okay, I look like Nelly. Thank you, Helena. Uh, so we need content and a place to keep it. Again, sorry, Solman, I'm talking about a place. But of course, it's a virtual place, even though it's real, but it's a place online. All right, and we're talking about WizIQ, so there's a library on WizIQ, and you can add documents to folders and organize them in a library, just like you would in a regular library, but this is a virtual library. That's right, so it's a resource. 
So what do we have in the folders? What kind of files can we have? Any suggestions on the files that you can organize your content? What kind of files? That's right, Neves. PDF. Yes, pretest. That's right. Word documents. Thank you, Neves. Anything else? Post-task, pre-task, yes. But in what form, Sulman? You need to have a form for this, all right? Because we can have paper. Notice I'm going to go back to uh, the first slide. In the first slide, notice what the uh, students have. They have paper, okay? And they have pencils, and some of them have pens, okay? Nobody's using anything electronic. This was in 2007, I think. All right, so PDF files, podcasts. Podcasts are audio, so it could be MP3. There are different formats, of course. MP3, thank you, Neves. Uh, videos are MP4s. So these are different files. All right, YouTube links. That's right, so we're talking about links now that take us to audio, video. So we've got all this rich and, you know, things have changed and they're changing so fast. Okay, and I'm going to share some of those changes. Yes, Flash. I remember the days when Flash was a program that I was trying to learn or they were trying to teach me how to learn to use Flash and make movies using Flash. That was a long time ago frame by frame. But now flash means something completely different, of course. Google Drive solves it all. Okay, with Google Drive, you have it all except for the flash. But now you also have videos on Google Drive and lots of other things. There's MoveNote that is being developed. And there's uh, KZena, which is also uh, audio on Google Drive, and they have a lot of new application. That's right, KZena. That's right, very good. Okay, so we've got a library for our content, okay, which is really, really important. Okay, next, what we have is this, okay, which is like face-to-face, only I only see my face and you see my face. I could see your faces, but I don't see them. Right now, um, technology is not that developed, but I'm sure there'll be a day when all of us will be able to see each other's faces, okay, in a virtual classroom such as this. And when I say all of us, I don't mean nine people. I mean 20, 30, 50. You know, it could be like a, a hall. Okay, like in Second Life. Yes, I'm sure it will happen uh, sooner than we think. Why do you, you know, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, so the live online class has all these features. It has a microphone. Where's my microphone? Okay, there's the microphone. It has a whiteboard, which is this, what you're looking at. Right now, the whiteboard has two colors, right? The blue and the red. Um, There is a screen sharing apparatus that I'm going to be using in a minute. And there are writing tools. There's a webcam, which is the video, but it's called the webcam. There's a chat box that you're using. There's breakout rooms. Yes, that's for teamwork and then there's a poll i believe i used didn't i use the uh, breakout rooms in the elt mooc the first one with a jigsaw i think i did i'm not sure i did right thomas i don't remember that was yep (laughs) that was a long time ago so yes that's the jigsaw and it's really a nice feature to use uh with students They get a chance to be teachers and they can take turns leading because that's right, there's a team leader in the breakout rooms. 
break out means that they break out of the main room. It's like going into uh, little groups in a physical classroom. And then there's the poll where you can ask questions and get responses to get an idea of what's going on. <laughs> They're funny. Okay. And then we have interactions. All right. We've got discussions. And these are under the course feed. And you must have seen it because all of you have joined courses, including this course. There's a course feed, and that's where you can share the teacher, the instructor, the facilitator, the leader, whatever you want to call the, uh, the orchestra conductor, uh, shares the information in the course feed. And that's where you can have discussions around the content. So the course feed is actually a way to discuss content. It's open or content based. All right, now let's go back to the content library. What's nice is that unlike the first slide where I showed you a, uh, okay, teamwork where everybody is working together. They're together, but okay, take a look at the difference. What is the difference between where everybody works together and these two? Okay, this is not teamwork. So, um, good night, good night, Helena. So, how is this different from um, a face to face classroom? Well, first of all, you can work independently. And I think that Andrew Weiler mentioned this quite a bit, okay, in his uh, talk about independent learning. Do we allow our students to become independent learners the way we are? Because I would say that every teacher is definitely an independent learner. All right. So in order to develop independence and for students to be able to go at their own pace, whether it's faster or slower, but to be able to learn and feel ownership for the learning, it's really, really important to be able to do this and technology as you can see allows from a very early age it allows students to learn on their own in the classroom it doesn't have to be outside the classroom okay so here they're completely on their own in addition the teacher or the instructor or the leader or mentor, whatever you want to call him or her, is able to give one-on-one -on -one instruction. Okay, now this is in the face-to-face, -face, but this can be done exactly the same way online. In other words, the teacher can connect 24-7 practically and leave responses for the students online. Okay, and this is really, really important because you want to feel like someone is there for you and you're not alone. Often students go home and do their homework and they feel frustrated because nobody's there to help them at home. But if you have a blended learning format, you can connect with your students after school when they're at home. And that's why I've been using technology to tell you the truth so that I can connect with my students after school. Because in school, I've, I don't have time. Nobody has time. You know, we're limited in how much time we can spend in school. Exactly, Valentina. But if we can connect with students, I connect with them all the time. They're continuously sending me emails 
and connecting with me through uh, the learning management system, or whatever it happens to be, whether it's WizIQ, whether it's Moodle, whether it's Ning, whether it's through our groups on Facebook, whether it's um, on Wiki Educator or Wikis or even on Google Drive. Okay, I'm always there for them. Always there for my students. And I think that's very, very empowering, not only for the student, but also for the teacher, because you don't feel frustrated. It's very frustrating for teachers to feel that they can't reach their students and help them. It's very frustrating. And it's very frustrating for students to be alone and have to go to maybe private teachers, which they don't like, tutors, but just the sheer frustration of not knowing, you know, what do I do? You know, do I call my teacher up? That's ridiculous. But online, we're all equal. So the reason I started with technology, and that was in, in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, was so that I could not, so that I could help my students and not feel frustrated. Hello, Abdel Jabbar. How are you? Good to see you. All right, so um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, even if you didn't come at the beginning and you think, well, maybe she talked about this, so I don't want to disturb. Don't feel that way, okay? Now, that's another thing, too. We have a, a live online class now, but what happens at the end? What happens if somebody comes in and they have questions? Well, they can ask in the course feed, in the discussion forums, in the support forums, through email. There's so many different ways that you can keep asking. Even if the teacher is asleep, you can still ask questions. And when the teacher wakes up, the teacher will answer. Okay, so I think that's really, really important. And you know what? It does take work. You know, people ask me, Nelly, but it's so much work. Yes, it is work. It's a lot of work. But it's worth it because there's less frustrations. And you really connect with your students and you become like a family. A family of learners. All right, teamwork. Another thing that you can do in the classroom is teamwork. But it's a lot of work and it's not that easy. There's a lot of noise in the classroom, a lot of noise. How many of you have uh, done teamwork in your classes? Give me a thumbs up if you've done teamwork in a physical classroom. Okay, thumbs up. I told you I've had competitions in the class where the students run back and forth, but it, you know, and, and teamwork, it gets so noisy. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I'm, I don't particularly like noise. I like music, but not noise. So um, online, it's so easy to form teams and to work in teams. Uh, this is an example. I don't know if you can see me here, but I'm right here. Okay, and these are the kids that were involved in the program. Okay, this is the uh, program I was telling you about. This is it. Okay, these are the teachers planning everything. We're working together. And uh, these are the students. Did I miss something? I think I missed. Uh, these are the students, okay? Henry Ford said something that I think you might like. Coming together is a beginning. Okay, that's the first thing. You get together. Okay, so here we are. We're all together. Keeping together is progress. Okay, we're together and we're trying. But working together is success. Right, students tend to resort there. That's right, that's right. That's why online is so important. Nobody's left out. No one is left out. Everyone is involved. 
because the teacher has control. You know, we don't have much control in the physical classroom and we're getting less and less control. Even at university, students do not listen to their professors anymore. It's just too boring and we lose control. But online, you're in charge. <laughs> the teacher is the uh, orchestra conductor. The teacher is in charge. All right, so here we are again, back to my friends. And notice, this is called socially engaging activity. Now, I mentioned this at the beginning. What makes this socially engaging? And what activity? Okay, take a look at these. The content, very good, Slavka. That's right. It's the content. You see, they're all looking at, they're all doing the same thing. Okay, this one's looking to see what she's doing. There's no cheating, it's not a test. Okay, everyone is working together. That's right. It allows for so much. It allows for socially engaging activities. Now this you can do, but how long can you do this for? An hour, two hours, three hours, even 10 hours, and then you go home. But it goes on. It goes on if you're online. If you're offline, it stays off. And I don't know, you came in late, so let me show you a, uh, an example. Uh, since uh, you came in late, of the different kind of uh, instruction. There's independent learning online, individualized instruction, okay, as a result of technology, and then teamwork. You can do all this very, very successfully online and engage everybody in the content. All right. Now, what's the benefit? What do you gain besides lack of frustration? That's a negative. But what positive things do you gain? Yes, it is, Valentina. Differentiation is very, very important because every learner is very, very different. I don't think there are two learners that are the same. And yet in the physical class, and we put everybody in the same class, and one teacher, you know, if you have 30 students, you should have 30 teachers, <laughs> not one teacher for 30 students. That's ridiculous because every student learns in a different way. And because every student is different. That's right, individualized teaching, exactly. Exactly, that's the point. And that's where, it's not just learning style, it's just a different human being. You know, the, the mere fact that you're different, that we're all so different from one another, we're unique. We need to be taught and we learn in unique, in our unique ways. I don't think there are two people in this world that uh, are exactly the same. I don't think that there are two people in this world that learn in exactly the same way. So why are we putting everybody into, <laughs> into a box, okay, um, with one teacher? But you know the historical reason for schools and so on, there was a reason for it. Okay, but uh, before that, there were tutors. It was one-to-one -one apprenticeship. It was different in, you know, the old, old days. All right, so the benefits, of course, are growth. You grow. You really, truly grow. Because the learning is about growing, both personally and professionally. And being able to reach students and being able to learn your way and develop as an individual provides both personal and professional growth. Now, some of you, um, how many of you have created a course on WizIQ? 
if you could add that in the chat box give me a thumbs up if you have thumbs down if you haven't how many of you have created a um, a course on Wiz IQ and know what I'm talking about I presume that um, none of you from what I can see here from the names Oh, Sul Sulman, you have. I had no idea. Thomas. Okay, great, Thomas. I was hoping to get that response. Very good. I would say work in progress. Work in progress. That's something that we used to use on Wiki Educator. Planning will be effective to achieve. Well, there are courses right now on WizIQ where you can get training on how to on how to uh, create courses schedule classes and so on has anyone taken one of those courses with um, Jasmine I believe it's Jasmine Jasmine I think that's how she spells her name oh you have very good not yet all right let me let me give you a little tour all right uh, i'm going to give you a little tour and give you a chance to do that you can create a course right now are you ready do you have your pencils what do you need to get ready online you need content what do you need to get ready Let's see what you have to say about that. You need a laptop. You've got something open there. Otherwise, you fingers to click. That's right, clicking away. How many of you uh, use? I know that in South America, hardly anybody uses a mouse. What do you use? They, they use their pads. I, I've never seen anything like it because I could never work fast enough with a pad. You use a tablet. Okay, so. Um, use a plan <laughs> that's good okay pcs all right so uh, let me take you uh, open the location here and i'm going to um add a tab i don't want to leave this area i new tab and was iq okay so let's take a look you're all gonna do it okay we don't have much time but we have enough time for you to get started all right so you're going to create a course you can always edit remember edit somebody said they were afraid who was it that said they were afraid okay you can always edit all right so keep that in mind no matter what you do you can always edit Okay, so think of a name for a course. Okay, maybe you could add it in the chat. What would you like your course to be called? Any suggestions, ideas? Maybe you can help one another. You want to call it my first course? <laughs> okay. Think of a subject that you'd like to teach. What would you like to teach? A course on what? No, your course. You're going to create a course. English. Okay, what are you going to call the course? You got, you want to, okay, you want to teach law. Very good. ELT. But what about ELT? Writing. Okay, be specific. Make it uh, a very specific course. Like, think of a course like you would a, um, a class, but an extended class where you have lots of little lessons. Okay, so think of a subject because you're going to do it. Okay, and I'm going to show you how. All right, so I'm going to screen share. Methodology for what? In general, that would be nice. Research methodology. 
Okay, let me take you. There we are. I hope you can see that. Uh, this is WizIQ. This is my account. You can see the live classes on. Okay, and I want to create a course. So where do I go? Well, you can see here's my home. Okay, so I go home. You all have home. And in home, I go to the left and it will say create course under course. Okay, it says create course. So I go to create course, click on it, and then all it asks me is to write a title. So I'm going to write a title. Uh, the title will be, um, what should I call it? Um, I'd like to do a course on baking. I don't know anything about baking. All right, baking. Okay, and I'm going to click on create, and that's it. I've done it. Okay, I have a course called Baking. That's the first step. Okay, so that's all I want you to do. Here is the link. Take the link and share it in the chat box. That's all. A name of a course, go to the link and share it. Are you ready? All right, so let me go back, stop it. Okay, so uh, there's the link to my course on Baking. What I'd like you to do is the same thing. Go to your account on WizIQ. Very easy. You're going to do it now. Okay. Go there. Go to the left home. First home on top. The left courses. Create course. And give it a name. And bring the link. Let's see who's... And don't think too much. I, you know what? I'm going to develop a course on baking. Maybe I'll learn something. Because my husband bakes. I'm a Oh, <laughs> Thomas, did you surprise me? What do you think? I don't think you surprised me. I expected you to be first. All right. So there's... <laughs> okay. So there's Thomas's course. I'm really curious. It's called what? What? It looks like a... Spanish. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to join. Country? I have to help us customize your experience on WizIQ. Okay, so I'm not from India. This is lovely, Thomas. I love it. I love the image. So where's Canada? Okay, there we go. Save. All right, now I'm going to enroll. Wow, I love it. Ooh. Okay, thank you. All right, so Thomas, you had one already. That's not fair. All right, so uh, let's see, Valentina, where do you take the numbers from? What numbers? Numbers? Oh, the numbers are automatic. You don't have to do anything. Where do you? T yes. All right, so do you want me to show you again what you do? All right, take you there again. Yes? No? Oh, good, John Davey, you created a course. That's lovely. Oh, no, that's just something. No, Valentina, that's automatic. That WizIQ does it. Oh, where do you get the link? Were you able to see the screen sharing? Okay, let's try again. Were you able to see the screen? Ah, the, did you create the uh, course? If you create the course, You'll be able to get the, uh, here we are, you'll be, that's, um, let me, okay, first thing you do is you go to home. There's the link, copy link. You see it? It's on the right. Okay, there it is, copy it. That's just his number. WizIQ does it. So you go to home, and then you go to the left, you have create course. You click on Create Course, and then you write a name. I have a baking course already, but let's write another name. Um, I'll call this course, uh, wait, no, I shouldn't. Give it a name and create the course. But you know what? I'm going to go back home, and I'll show you how you can delete a course. 
Okay, so I'm going to go into my courses. Okay, these are baking course. I'm going to go into edit to show you how I can delete it. I hope I can delete it. Okay, and then um, I can't delete it. There we are. Uh, let me go into the course and then I'm going to delete it here. You see top right, this thing, this is the icon for setting. I go in there and then I can either edit the course, delete it. I'm going to delete it. Okay, delete. So I can create another one. Okay, see, these are courses, Second Life MOOC. Okay, and the link is right here. You see it has a different number. Here's another link with a different number. Okay, notice that if you go into your course settings, make sure that a learner can invite other learners. Thomas, I don't know if you fix this, but it's really important. Otherwise, they don't see the link of the course and they can't share it. So make sure that all of these are ticked off. Okay, I hope you were able to. There's the, again the link to the course. I'll copy it. You can also share the link on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Here is about the course. Okay, you can edit at any time. If you want to delete, notice what I did. If, if you ever want to delete your course, you need to go to Course Settings over here. Okay, Course, and then you can delete. Okay, so let me go back before we get timed out. And here is the link. Whoops, I'll stop. Here is the link to my course. And you see it's got a different number. How come your course has such a long... No, that's a class. That's not a course. Care, uh, Titov. That's not a course. That looks like a link to a class. But it, no, it says courses. You're right. So why is it so long? Oh, you're right. It's a course. Oh, but it's so long. Oh, you didn't get it in the right place. That's why. I see why you asked the question. Uh, and I can't even enroll because you have the... Um, I see what happened here. Um, let me screen share. You gave us the wrong link. The link is on the right. Okay, let me take you there and show you what I mean. Okay, this is your course. This is, um, says you cannot enroll in the course. And the reason is that this is a preview of the course. Okay, it's a preview. See this, you got it here. That's not where you get it. Let me show you where you get it. You get the, the link to the course. If you go into Course Learners, you get the link. You see here it is. Or if you go to Courseware, you get the link, course feed, you get the link. The link is on the right, but it's either under course feed, courseware, or course learners. Yes. Enroll learners. No. Oh, yeah, it's here. If you want to enroll learners, it's here. About the course. No. So what you did, you clicked on preview. Don't click on preview. Click on course where course feed course feed and then you get it here that was a very good question thank you for helping me i have to leave shortly we have a skype call with our son oh yes he lives in texas oh congratulations oh he's married that's wonderful from tech that's wonderful thank you for sharing that john We're in Texas. I was in Dallas last year at the TESOL. It was my first time in Texas. It was quite an experience for a Canadian in Texas. Oh, San Antonio, this was in Dallas. Okay, so uh, anybody else with the link? The link to the course. So we've got uh, John Davies course. Okay, which is new. Thank you, John, for doing that. You can also add an image, of course, but that's the first step. 
Okay, the first step is just to create the course and the rest will follow. Anybody else? Let's see. Anyone else? Wow, you better go there, John. I mean, I think that <laughs> you better you better find a way to get there. Not virtually, by plane, a real plane. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, technology technology factory is that name? <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, very good, excellent. Wow, that looks fantastic. But what is your name? Ah, Freya Sullivan. Wow, I love it. Look, it's all, did you do it just now? That's amazing using, excellent. That's lovely. Wow, that is super. Oh, you, wow, that's great. So you created a course, very, very good. That's lovely. All right, so listen, your task for the week is to explore whoops I think I did something wrong here is to explore okay explore and continue creating your course work on your course oh you did it Karititov oh that's wonderful let's see I'm so glad that I oh there it is now I can enroll excellent journal writing love it that's wonderful. Anyone else? Okay, that's great. So add it to the course course feed for the course. Anybody bring the link to the course? We're talking about the course on WizIQ, Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. Can you get the link, please? Oh, John, you'll have to tell me about that. Can you send me a, can you send me an email? I'm not going to remember all that. It sounds wonderful, something that I may need myself, even though um because my kids are all over the place too. Oh, it's too late. No, we've got 2 minutes. Okay, so tomorrow. All right. I understand that it's very late and I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I missed the last slide. The last slide says Let's get started. And that's what it's about, getting started. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you for getting started. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the road, okay? Work in progress, on the road. All right, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye. This will be added to YouTube. I have recorded it without your name so that uh, your privacy will be held. I think that's important. Bye for now.